Batman Begins is a great film. It has changed superhero movies for the better. But for those of you who don't know, Batman Begins has actually created a superhero formula that allows for superhero trilogies to be successful. Now this is how superhero films work. The first one is pretty straightforward. You start off the origins, etc., fight the villain at the end, end of story. The second one is the funnest. Usually sequels are kind of better when it comes to superhero films. X2, Spider-Man 2, Dark Knight, these are huge improvements on the films. And the third one is usually the hardest, and that has been lately where everything just falls apart. Writing is awful, characters are awful, everything's just awful. But what Christopher Nolan has done has set up a superhero franchise in a way where it's set up from the start and has a finishing payoff all through the end and creates a successful, great trilogy. So let's take a look at Batman Begins. First, he completely rebooted Batman. He didn't go anywhere anywhere near the old ones, in my opinion, crappy Batmans. None of them were good. He didn't do the bat nibbles, didn't do any of that shit. He completely rebooted it. This is a whole nother universe. Didn't suck the dick of the originals at all. Secondly, he set everything up. As in setup. Like things in the third Batman are still going to be there that are, were set up in the first one. He set things up. And he did the origin story, but in a new, retelling, great way. But the greatest part of this formula, the thing that really makes or break the deal, is the villain. Because as much as the villain is the bad guy and stuff, he really does make the plot. He makes the movie, doesn't he? What he did was he didn't do the Joker, which is the genius part of this entire formula. And superhero movies, the successful ones, follow this formula exactly. So what do I mean, though, by he didn't use the Joker and that was genius? Well, look, kids. The origin, the first movie, it's the origins. It's the origin of the hero. This isn't like a real movie movie. This isn't like the hero doing his thing. It's the origins. It's him figuring out who he is, why he's doing this, having the powers or whatever. He's just starting out with this whole thing in this superhero gig. To start him out with someone huge like his arch enemy, like the Joker, would be, well, a waste in my opinion. See, the original Spider-Man did this. They started out with the Green Goblin, the arch enemy. This was a bad mistake. However, the film did work. And I'm not saying the film can't work with the arch enemy. But the problem is, you started out with the arch enemy, but then you have two more films to work with. And you basically, in simplest term, you blow in your load. You're trying to create a trilogy here. You're not trying to create one movie. Come on, it's 2012. There's no such thing as one movie. So you have to set up this whole entire thing. And if you use the main villain of the entire shtick with the first movie, well, you're just wasting. It's a wasted opportunity. See, now, Spider-Man 2 was good. It was better than its predecessor. But unfortunately, it didn't have the arch enemy, which is when, you know, I mean, the second one is when you have fun with your story. There's no more origin. He's been the hero. He knows how to do his thing. And you have fun. That's why The Dark Knight, X-Men 2, and Spider-Man 2, these things are great movies. They know how to have fun. But then by the third one, uh-oh, what do we do? We've basically done everything. We already did the arch enemy. The second one, we had fun. And the third one, well, that's the hardest one. Now, Spider-Man 3 is the worst, worst of them all. The worst fucking three of superheroes ever. And look how that went. Awful. Just awful. Everything fell apart. They did the arch at the start. Second one, they had fun. And the third one, well, what do we do? We have three villains, I guess. Terrible, just terrible, terrible, terrible. So basically, when you write a superhero trilogy, that's it. You write a superhero trilogy. The moment you put your pen down for that first movie, you got to be thinking about two movies ahead because it has to all come together. It can't just be one, one movie at a time. It really can't. You have to know where your story is going. So right after Batman, what comes out? Superman Returns. And what do they do? They fail all the criteria. A, they suck the original's dick too much. It can't be a reboot. They couldn't just do a whole nother concept, which fails because they're doing something from the 70s, which isn't all that great. Secondly, they're using the arch enemy, which isn't good. Lex Luthor is the main villain of Superman. And damn, he's been used like 20 million other times. Can we get someone new? And thirdly, there's no setup other than that stupid kid, which wasn't going anywhere. And everything just fell apart. It wasn't successful. No one really liked it. Maybe. And altogether, it was all done. So they're rebooting it once again. See, this is why you have to follow the formula. 
So now, I'm going to go through a couple of future films that have fallen this formula and have been successful. First off, X-Men First Class. They did not use Magneto as the villain for the first one. How great. So now the second one, they can have fun and have Magneto. Or perhaps maybe as more of a side villain, and then the third one, the real Magneto, comes out. Now, kind of the Avengers, the individual movies, Iron Man, Thor, all these, they don't exactly follow this formula. However, the Avengers in of themselves is setting up the movie The Avengers. So, it's okay. Uh, obviously, Captain America, they use the Red Skull, because who the hell else are they going to use? I mean, come on, Hitler? And so they set up the Avengers movie. And what did they do in the Avengers movie? They used Loki, which isn't that badass of a villain the guy in the next movie i don't know his name but he seems like the arch enemy of the avengers he seems like a threat to deal with as opposed to loki so it's more of a setup because it's more of just setup the green lantern followed this too they didn't use sinestro as the main villain they set up the whole premise the world everything and then completely set up sinestro at the end and then hey he's gonna be the villain for the second one having fun Unfortunately, though, Green Lantern was a piece of shit. However, if it was a good movie, I could imagine the sequel being, whoa, ten times better. It just would have been a great fun ride of setup. And here we go back to Man of Steel, Superman. What are they doing? Rebooting the whole thing. This looks like a completely new, different direction, not even, not even close to resembling the old ones. Completely new thing. What are they doing? Changing the origins, in a sense. Not using Lex Luthor. Zod is a pretty badass villain and has been used, but he isn't a Lex Luthor. Great, now Sumer can actually fight someone instead of some fucking bald guy with a wig. And now this movie, the final movie on the list that I think, it hasn't even come out yet, but I think has followed it like a f motherfucker. Regardless if you know it or not, I'm going to explain it to you. The Amazing Spider-Man has sucked the dick off this formula, ladies and gentlemen. It really has. I already see the trilogy. It, I already see it. It's there. It's already written. And they haven't even wrote it yet. The Amazing Spider-Man follows this in every way. First off, they change it. They don't copy the Raimi films in any sense. The Raimi films unfortunately ran out of steam. That's why Spider-Man 3 sucked, right? They're not going that route. They're completely going, taking their time. The Raimi films, Peter is in high school for 10 minutes. He, he's already has Mary Jane as his first girlfriend and all that stuff. And he has his powers in the end. And they use the Golden Arch Mate. They blow their load first off and first most. The Amazing Spider-Man doesn't use Mary Jane. He's still in high school the entire movie. And they use a pretty lame villain like the Lizard, not the Arch Enemy. How genius is that? So what we're going to have here, the Lizard gets defeated. Him and Gwen are happy, happy. The second one... Guess who shows up? Maybe the Green Goblin. And then he kills Gwen Stacy, like in the comics. He's still in high school in the first one. The second one, hey, maybe he can go to the Daily Bugle. Kind of becoming his life and, you know, growing up. Or maybe save it for the third one. Who knows? And then the third one, what happens? He meets Mary Jane. I already see this trilogy happening. It's done. So basically the formula is like this. You don't want to blow your load off too early. The original, the origins, whatever. You want to make it completely fresh, completely new. You want to make it different from predecessors of what it used to be or whatever. And you want to not use the main villain. You want to start off simple, really. Get into the origins and have just a simple, straightforward story. And then the second one, blow our minds. And the third one basically brings the first and second one together. Because you have to set up in that first one. Notice how the Dark Knight rises in the trailers. It's going, the legend of the Dark Knight rises. The legend, like he mentions in the first one, it's all just set up. So the formula goes like this. Reboot divided by previous films plus origins over setup minus arch enemy plus superhero over lame villain equals successful superhero film trilogy, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you make good films, and this is why Dark Knight, all these movies are so fucking great. Have a nice day.